Hey, the bus, can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. How's it going? Doing good. Very nice, very nice. We haven't even started. We are getting close to 100 people. So that's nice. Yeah, that really feels good. Yep, looking forward to it. A few more speakers joining in. Wrong and uh, Insha. How are you doing, Tapas? How's it going? Yeah, I just finished uh, office and <laughs> feeling a little bit uh, free right now. Nice. You know, this, this space is going to be very exciting. Yeah, I talk about developer portfolio and basically like how people showcase the work that they do. So i mm. um, really excited about it. I see Alex in the chat as well. So shout out to Alex. Alex, you have a blue tick mark. Did, did, did they change it? I have not been following Twitter at all. <laughs> I didn't write Alex as well. First it was a uh, white check mark. Now it's a blue thing. Hey, folks. No idea what's going on. I was, no idea I was just going to respond and say, uh, I, I was testing out the verification system. I had a prepaid credit card that somebody oh. bought me about a year ago when I went traveling. And I thought, maybe this will work. And you know what? It works. See, verif <laughs> verification means nothing because I used a prepaid credit card. Yeah, it says that, you know, it's verified because person is using Twitter Blue. And some people who were actually verified, like, um, because of, like, you know, uh, the previous way, they, they lost that uh, status, I think, when they got the purchase. So let me tell you a real reason that I, I would want verification. Because I I happen to share the same name as that American guy who Alex Jones who talks about lots of conspiracy theories. So that's exactly the kind of scenario where you want to have verification <laughs> Dude, that you're not. You know, here. you know, I I remember that now because I was at KubeCon. We were at the boat cruise party, and this person was asking me that, "Hey, Kunal, you know, um, uh, how do you get started with content creation or whatever?" And then I gave your example. And I was like, you have to find a niche. So I gave an example like, hey, Alex makes content for senior developers. So I was like, who's Alex? I was like, Alex Jones. And then she was like, oh, that's a way, you know, that's not good. I don't like them. And I was like, well, Alex seems to be a nice guy. What did he do? <laughs> so so then yeah. she was like, no, it's a, it's a podcaster or something. I was like, <laughs> When I first met Leanne Kunal, she said to me, she said, so Sandy Hook, what was that all about? And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. All right, yeah. Good luck with Twitter Blue. Well, hey, Rong, thanks a lot for joining in. How are you doing? I like your new hey, profile picture. Very good. Hey, what's up, Kanal? Long time no speak. I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Doing all right. I've been traveling too much, so I'm yeah? happy to be. I'm happy to, like, not be at any more events. Which Which future. part of the world are you in now? I am back in India for like uh, 20 days. Then I'll. Oh, you're in up. India. I thought you were in yeah. the UK. I, I did move to London, but my apartment is like, uh, there's some construction work going on. So it's actually cheaper for me to come back to India and stay here for a while, than rent an Airbnb in London. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, where, also, where are you living in London? Finsbury Park. Oh, okay. A bit, a bit out, right? Yeah, a bit it's out. A, it's a good, good area. Is that zone, is that zone three or four? Or four? I have no idea. Alex, <laughs> do you know? Hello, Alex. Nice to meet you. Alex hey, nice to meet you. a lot of lot of London very nicely. Say, say that again, Kunal. What was the question? Which no, I said is... Finsway Park. Is that zone three or zone four? Just trying to re recollect. I want to say it's zone three, but someone's going to prove me wrong with five seconds of Googling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't do that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you can get started. Well, thanks for joining everyone. And uh, we'll give a huge shout out to Showcase for, you know, having an amazing panel. We have Tapas joining. We have Faber joining in. We have uh, Wrong here. We have Insha, oh, I'll add you as speaker. Done. We're already getting a lot of requests. So uh, please be patient. We'll add everyone in. And we're talking about why is it important to have a developer portfolio. Um, so yeah, excited, excited about the session. We have Alex joining us as well. Um, so very nice person. So yeah, let's get started. Before we move forward, um, I just want to share that if anyone has any questions, you can either put it in the pinned tweet or you can just, um, you know, request to be a speaker and we can add you in and it's being recorded so that people who may not be able to join can watch it later on 
uh, happy to you know hoping to have a good good discussion around uh, learning in public and uh, also uh, one more pin tweet on the space that you can find is um, so showcase if you don't know showcase it's a social media platform for developers they're doing this um, challenge uh, like you can get started with uh, like just write your blogs and share your journey or whatever uh, which we'll talk more about later and I'll publish a video on it soon and you can win some nice nice prizes you can also make your resume it's a very nice tool you know uh, very, very nice platform so I highly recommend you checking it out um yeah and we'll also be giving away some swag in this session so if you ask any questions and and, and stuff like that um happy to give away some swag for move forward let's get started with some introductions uh in the order of you know how people joined in so tapas would you like to introduce yourself Oh, I'm first. Okay, sure. Hey, Kunal, and hi everyone. This is Tapas. Uh, so I am, I'm a full stack developer, um, a, a blogger, writer. Um, try to educate people on my YouTube channel, and I'm also the content lead uh, at Showcase. So I'm looking forward to interact with most of you and want to learn and share. Thank you. Amazing. Um, Alex, you want to go next? Sure. Um, my name is Alex Jones. Um, I am a an engineering director at Canonical, so I work with Kubernetes, um, and a lot of what I do is around how do we educate people and uplift people in engineering roles to uh, achieve better. And so, yeah, I also produce some content on YouTube. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Rong, you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, Rong. My name is Rong. I'm one of the co-founders at Showcase where we're building a professional network for developers. Uh, software engineer at heart, mostly worked on the back end uh, in my life. And uh, it's been a pleasure to meet Kunal on, on the web and looking forward to, to answering your questions and seeing how this space will go about developer portfolios. Amazing. Uh, Fever, would you like to go next? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Fever. Um, I'm a full stack developer, content creator, and I work as a DevRel at Showcase. So I look forward to talking about the topic and answering your questions. And Insha, uh, I believe you're having some technical issues. I've sent you a co host invite as well. I'm not sure why you're not able to join in. Uh, please join via your mobile phone. If you're trying to join via web, it will give you issues. Um, but I'm not sure what's going on. So. Gonna add you a speaker. Yeah, doesn't seem to work. Can you can you speak now? Are you in the space? All right, doesn't look like it. Some tech issues. So yeah, uh, we can try get you, getting you in. Try rejoining in. And um, right, cool, cool. yeah. So let's get started. Um, so let's first talk a little bit more about why is it important to have a developer portfolio. When we talk about portfolio, many people may think of different things. For someone, it may be like their like content. So maybe they have a blog running. Some have a YouTube channel. Someone's portfolio can be their GitHub profile, for example, uh, LinkedIn, if you use that, uh, stuff like that, your speaking engagements. So what's it really all about when we talk about having a developer portfolio? What is the importance of having a developer portfolio and how do we make sure that, you know, you know, there's so many ways to represent the work that you do. Um, yeah, just let's, let's, let's just start with by, you know, folks can just share their experiences. Wrong, would you like to go first? Yeah, for sure. So I think when, when we talk about developer portfolio, I mean, for the longest time, even when we started off being a developer, everybody talked about, hey, you need a, you basically just need a page on the web to showcase who you are, right? Uh, and as we live in this digital world where people, you know, opportunities come online more so than offline these days, uh, it's good to have that page where you can really showcase your skills, your knowledge, your abilities in a world that really prioritizes your publicly demonstrated abilities over your one page A4 resume that you can't always, uh, that doesn't really get in front of everybody else, right? So in the developer portfolio as a word, I guess is just uh, 
it just represents a more general term of just having an online presence, whether it's building publicly, whether it's writing content and putting that in public, whether it's showcasing your skills. It's just that page where people can learn more about you, can reach out to you for opportunities uh, and potentially connect. Uh, so it's, to me, that's what it means to have a developer portfolio. Now, I guess as a developer, it's a bit different when compared to a designer or uh, let's say a movie maker and, and so on and so forth. As a developer, you need certain, a certain, a few ways to kind of represent who you are. Today, many people do it through a combination of a LinkedIn profile, a GitHub profile, a Medium blog, a, a resume, your own portfolio to kind of show your front-end skills if you're a front-end developer. So there, there are many forms of it, but I think the most important core piece of this is just to have a place online where people can find you, connect with you, and potentially get you more opportunities uh, in, in the world, in the digital world. So that, that's my take on it. I agree with that. And you have a lot of senior folks here. So I'll ask this question later on, like what you look for when you're, you know, hiring someone, be that in terms of portfolio or resume or whatever. But uh, Tapas, would you like to share your experience? Yeah, just taking the cue from wrong. Um, so developer portfolio is basically, to me, is a representation of the developer. And it, it, is, it is not just about, you know, spelling out certain uh, core skill that somebody has, maybe certain language or framework. It's also about the work the, in the entirety, uh, kind of projecting that in, 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 that, in that web presence or the online presence. The, it could be possibly the, uh, the work that they have done on GitHub, you know, bringing certain repositories, the kind of articles that people have written, you know, bringing those articles. And, you know, basically they're all work, the side as well. They would have published certain videos, bring them in, you know, uh, and also maybe you want to kind of build certain uh, way that how you interact with your communities, how you how, how open you are uh, to kind of learning and sharing. You can build all this essence in your portfolio. And uh, that's kind of going to connect you back to uh, many opportunities. Uh, if it is done way, you know, right way, and I'm sure that we'll be discussing some of this right way of doing, you know, developer portfolio in this space. But yes, as as much as we can represent ourselves, all our work, um, and in a way that it, is, it keeps updated, right? It should not be like we stale. We make it once and leave it like that. It should be kind of keep updated, keep keep relevant, and represent yourself in the portfolio. I agree with that. I agree about uh, you know representing representing yourself because when people ask me about learning in public they're like you know do we need do we need a big following or whatever and so the way I like to, uh, yeah can you hear can you can, am I audible or yes yes cool. can hear and you now and i was just saying that it's it's not about the it's not about the number of followers you have it's about uh, you know building credibility it may seem like oh kunal you have 140000 but <laughs> But but uh, I can say this because the the first role I, like the current role I got like at Sivo for example, that was way before I had my YouTube channel and everything. Um, so it's it's not like you know I mean definitely it helps. I'm not saying it does not. It it helps tremendously. Okay, I'm not saying that. But you know to ro- land the roles and like oh, all these other things, it's it's the vanity metrics are not really mandatory. Um, all right, Alex, would you like to go next? You're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how I did that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, look, let me start again. I've been a hiring manager for a while now, and I was thinking how I would answer this question. And really, I think the reason that a developer portfolio is so important is it gives you something to talk about, right, with your potential interviewer, with your potential reviewer of your application. For example, let's start with a CV. It's great to see somebody has a GitHub, a website, something that I can talk to them about or something that shows that they have a level of interest beyond just me getting to their email inbox and saying, yeah, we've got an interview for you. So that's the first part that's really interesting is being able to see that somebody has something else that they're excited about and that they care about. It shows that you also want to grow stuff. It shows you want to grow your skills, grow your education and grow your interests. And then the more important part of that is as the interviewer, as the hiring manager, I actually have something that I can talk to you about that you are passionate about responding. And what's so clever about a developer portfolio 
is it can entirely be about stuff you care about, but you can use that to your advantage in any scenario, right? So I just did a video on this um, on my CN Skunkworks channel, but you could say, for example, I'm just a React developer and I love doing React modules, or I'm just a Python developer and I just love doing ML for Python. However, if the interviewer says, okay, well, tell me about a project you've done that's been challenging, or tell me about a time where you had some conflict, you can think about those projects you've built and say, well, you know what? I did X, Y, Z, and those things are really challenging. So your developer portfolio is your springboard for success because it helps you to build a narrative around your career and what it is that is important to you. Thanks a lot for sharing, Alex. Uh, yeah, I totally, totally agree with your, your point. And uh, because it's, 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 it's sometimes hard, you know, like uh, what, what, like obviously you have the, the role mentions like what, what is required. And when I'm giving interviews, I'm, I, I, I'm very like straightforward. So I will ask them, you know, uh, what are you looking for? Uh, how can I prepare and, you know, give the, give my best and things like that. And having just like, you know, just sharing your experiences like out of the book, uh, can definitely help uh, you know take it one step one step further because it's not just about I don't know if it's just me like all the things mentioned on the like job portal like okay these are the things required but okay it'd be pretty cool if we can also share about other things you're involved with like like ML or whatever you mentioned yeah uh, Insha has finally joined in can you can you try speaking uh, maybe tech issues no more you're on uh, mute It's very uh, laggy. Is it just me or? Uh... No, same for me. Yeah, the voice is like laggy. Uh, can't really hear much. Yeah. Um, nope, sorry. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, maybe something with the microphone or the connection or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Again, it's the same same issue. Yeah. No. No. No worries. Uh, we can uh we can try fixing it. You know, th these things happen, and uh you can uh you know sh share views via tweets, and I can you know, uh read it out for you. You can DM me. But yeah, uh, let's try something else. You know, hit and trial. Uh, <laughs> till it works. But yeah. In some electric noise. Yeah. Oh, can I add you in again? And I guess co host. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, why Insha is fixing that? Let's move forward. Um, cool. So, when we're talking about developer portfolio, uh, we're talking about, let's say, you know, listing out all the things that, you know, you, uh, you, you active in and you're, you're doing and you know and, and uh, just representing the work that you do so when we think about it uh, one of the format that comes to mind is creating a resume so let's talk a little bit more about that how you know you can create a resume that can help you land your dream job uh, the question i can frame it in this way like you you found a very specific role that has listed some requirements or whatever and you're submitting a resume um, for that role what are some of the best practices that you would recommend? And uh, wrong, you are a you know you are a founder. So what do you look for in resumes? Um, you know when 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 you are hiring people. And I know in showcase like you have a feature to you know um, like with one click of, click of a button you can create your own resume. Um, it's sort of like exporting your profile and making a resume out of it. So what were some of the key things that you took into consideration? Like okay, if someone is using a platform to create a resume. We want them to have all of these things, and why should we have? Why should we let them have all these other things? So what makes a strong resume that helps you land your dream job? Let's start with wrong and then we'll move forward with like other people. And a favor, I know I had to come back to you as well because you got disconnected. So you can go next. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll pause on the showcase a bit and just talk about as a hiring, someone who's hiring. The, the first thing that I'll say is... When, when, you, when you receive a resume for the first time, you really want to know that the candidate has really looked through the job description and that the, they are a fit. Because most of the time, we've received a lot of resumes that uh, haven't really looked through the job description. And this 
comes back to the idea of spray and pray, where people just you know, blast their resume out to every single job position. But they haven't really taken a good look at the specific job and whether they are a good fit, right? And in the past, I've always favored the, as a, as a job applicant myself, uh, back in San Francisco, I've always favored the more study the company, study the job description and see if you're a better fit, see if you're a good fit and then uh, you know, curate your resume around that, right? And so w- back in the day when we were applying to jobs, we usually had like our documents folder would have you know, five, six different resumes that we would prepare uh, to send to a different company. It could be different projects you're including different experiences. If you have sufficient experience, you should tailor your experiences for that specific company, for the role type. And so I think that's really, really important. We just understand the job description, understand the requirements and the tech stack, let's say if it's a software engineering job at a company, and then tailor your resume and prioritize what's important for that job. I think that's really, really important and and really, really crucial. Uh, Back to showcase, the reason why we've built this uh, resume snapshot feature or you know, the one-click resume generator, is because I've always thought that your resume is a living, breathing, dynamic thing, whereby the status quo of how we would keep our resumes would be to you know, have it on A4, we would adjust the format, find out what other people's formats are, uh, and then every time you would have to apply, you would have to create a new one, you say version one, version two, version one, Stripe, version two, you know, box, version three, Facebook, and you would have all these complicated ways just to manage something like this. You would even have an Excel sheet. And so because we thought it was a dynamic thing, on Showcase, you can basically generate your entire portfolio into a resume version, right? So Showcase is a platform where you can represent who you are holistically that combines your tech stack, your experience, your credentials, your GitHub repositories, your projects, everything into one. And then when you're ready to export that as a PDF, you just click the update resume, then you click view resume, and then you can basically take that away with you as a PDF and send that off to, to anybody, right? So that's the feature that we've built uh, for everybody uh, as a developer specifically. Amazing, Will. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing. And I'll come back to you, Rong, around, uh, I have a lot of questions around resume that I get from people. So uh, just hold on to that. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely uh, you know, ask you. Uh, but yep, I want to sure. give, a, I wanna give a, the platform to Favor because uh, you know they got disconnected. So Favor, uh, let you give yourself a, you know share your views and uh, yeah. you share your tips around uh, resumes and uh, building a developer portfolio. Okay, okay, okay. So um, yeah. So one one tip I like to share is um, around this idea that if you are I mean, whilst you're applying to jobs, you should also make sure that, you know, you are applying to jobs that aligns with, like, your sort of, you know, the, it should be, like, the ideal job that, you know, you think about, that you want to work in. So, like, for instance, I used to work in fintech. I lost him. Did you guys lose him? Yeah. Yeah, I lost him. I thought after Elon, you know, buying this thing, it would be stable, but you know, yeah, not yet. Probably not yet. Is he like a? I think he's a maybe he's a perfectionist or something. But like Tesla cars, I don't know. I've heard good things about Tesla cars, so I thought you know maybe Twitter would get better in terms of stability. But I think we got to give him a chance, man. We it's been like what a week. <laughs> Yeah. We gotta give him a chance. Yeah. There are bugs all the time. Yeah. But it's okay. I think why don't we why don't we go uh, if it's all right yeah. with you, Kunal, why don't we just keep going forward? Because I think there will be some connection issues off and on. It's off it's the on. general it's the status quo on Twitter spaces, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are able to hear now. Right. But yeah, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of questions already coming in and a lot of requests. So yeah, we should keep moving forward. Yeah, okay. if you go ahead. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So as I was saying, like you want to be applying to jobs that um, which that's sort of like your ideal jobs. So like, say you're into fintech, for instance, uh, and like you know, you go through a lot of, uh, you you go into like the job market. You wanna be searching for like jobs that sort of align with like your interest, right? And when at my previous job, like I was a senior, so they usually let me, you know, sort of interview people, and also I had the same like you know confirming a new person who comes to who is accepted into the company. And what we noticed was that 
a lot of people were like, let me say they're into they're into building e-commerce sites and like a whole lot of other stuff. I mean, they just apply, you know. They just keep up. They just they just they just dump it there, like you know, everyone is just <laughs> applying all over. And like, so what happened was that because of that, we ended up rejecting almost like a hundred percent of all like you know the applications because we weren't seeing anything you know that conforms with what we do right so we noticed that this wasn't going to help us and we then decided to you know just out of like a few of them like five of them we decided to just interview them probably later in the future these people might be used as reserves so we're looking for people who were like into like um, fintech who use c sharp as as a back end as a back end language so when we interviewed some of these people right what we noticed was that four out of five of them were like what we were looking for, right? <laughs> but it did not show in their it didn't it didn't show up in their in their portfolio, in their in their resumes, in their, like it didn't show up. So what I can what the thought process then was that okay, these people just were in a hurry, they just decided to apply, right? They didn't really tailor, they didn't really like, you know, rewrite their their put their their resumes to sort of like match, you know what they want to do, which is that they are, they are currently getting into fintech, right? Some of them already, some of them had the experience. Some of them were like over-experienced, but like their, their resumes were like, you know, years back. So what, I'm, so what I'll say is that if you're in the job market, you know, you're looking to apply, you're looking to make your CV like, you know, appropriate and... See, thanks a lot for sharing uh, that, that, that story around like, you're hiring people, you're looking for, like their previous experiences. It also depends on companies to companies, and also um, you know the, what what sen- se- what seniority level that the role is for. Uh, what do you think about like for someone who is if if someone is applying as a as like their first role, for example, in that case, what do you look for in terms of uh, oh, oh they they gone again? All right, I'll pass it over to Tapas <laughs> or Alex. Yeah, Alex, you have your hand raised. Uh, Tapas, I have a question for you, so please stay tuned. Yeah. Well. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. You know, you, you, you made me think about something in terms of young applicants or first-time applicants to jobs, and I'm in that market right now. I'm trying to grow out our Kubernetes team, and I have lots of great applicants from all over the world. So how do you make a decision on who to proceed? Well, some of the ways that those get narrowed down is that I look at some of the things they do outside of work. For example, you know, if they do have a job already or if they're fresh from university, I look at what they're doing um, to better themselves. You know, whether that's looking at something like GSOC, whether that's looking at Linux Foundation mentorship. Um, there are lots of different schemes that can, people can be doing. However, those are those are hard to get into. Let's face it. Not everyone can do those. There's a limited amount of positions. So, again, I look at the portfolio and I try to figure out what is it they're trying to tell me about them as a person. Is it that they have a real ambition? Is it that they have a real drive? Are they curious by nature? Are they a real team player in terms of they love working together? So overall, I think what I would say is that the resume is a way for you to articulate the kind of personality you are. And those jobs that you put on the resume, those are waypoints on a journey, right? You're telling the reviewer about your your career and you're giving them stops to, to take a look at and say, hey, I worked at Microsoft for three years. I did this, I did this at university and the things I learned and the skills I got there were X, Y, Z. My last piece of advice on that is when I review resumes, at the same time that it's great to talk about all the things you've done and you might be nervous about not having enough things, be economical, right? Be economical with the reviewer's time because a one to two page resume from my perspective is plenty. You can make it look pretty, you can make it look concise and I much prefer that over something that's 15 pages long and doesn't really tell me much. It's better to say little and keep somebody interested than to say a lot and to just lose the reviewer. Uh, thanks for sharing, Alex. And what do you, when you mean uh, portfolio and what, what, what do you mean? Like in terms of specifics, what are you looking for? So I think students are in a really interesting position right now compared to when I was at university, you know, almost two decades ago. There are so many um, tools and resources available online and things that you can subscribe to that you can learn from, whether that's a mail, uh, you know, a newsletter that you can start to get lots of cloud native updates about, whether that's participating in an open source project as a shadow, or whether that's just getting involved in a community like Data on Kubernetes. If, just as an example there, if somebody came up to me on their resume and they said, hey, I'm a member of Data on Kubernetes. I'm learning about stateful workflow, workloads. I'm learning about databases. I'm not an expert, but it's really interesting to me. 
I would love that. I would love that as a reviewer because it shows a real interest and a drive behind that person. And it also, like I said previously, it gets to know that person. Interviews are all about rapport. It is all about the psychology of you and the interviewer and the balance of power and being able to convey yourself in, I really want this job because I can do these things and I can grow in this direction. And these are the things that interest me. You're really presenting yourself, not just as a, a slim profile of can I code, but as a whole human being, because effectively we're hiring a human being here, right? We're not just hiring a robot to produce code. So I think the portfolio is a key component of that. And specifically what I mean with the portfolio, it could either be a set of repositories. It could be a set of articles on, on Dev2. It could even be, uh, you know, 100 days of, of learning. Or it could even be something as small as here are some gists from some code I was trying out. Just show me how you think and how you work. Couldn't agree more. Thanks a lot for sharing, Alex. It's like, you know, um, many people on their resume, they have like a little intro paragraph. So, for example, someone will write, I'm a machine learning enthusiast. But I believe it's important to also have proof to what you claim, like maybe some projects or some blogs or anything, you know, just just anything that would say that, okay, yeah, this person has worked in machine learning or whatever. So that's great. Yeah, thanks a lot for sharing, Alex. Um, and uh, Tapas, uh, I'd like to love to, you know, hear your views as well. But one question I have for you is, um, you were talking about, you know, previously we were talking about like, uh, like resumes and wrong was sharing about it. Um, is it, is it, it's, is it ideal to have like multiple versions of your resume? It depends. I mean, it, if if you if somebody is like multifaceted and kind of applying for a different kind of job, then they can actually have. I'll take my example. For example, I can probably tomorrow apply for a job which is in the full stack, or I can apply for a job which is completely on the content creation, right? So these are two completely different paths, though they overlap somewhere, but they are kind of entirely different path. And I might be having different kind of resume version based on like what exactly my job description demands and where I'm going to fit in. So in that sense, yes, it always makes sense to have different version of uh, resume. But uh, while doing that, the, uh, so I've been kind of interviewing for probably last eight to 10 years. And I have seen certain resume which are trying to bring many aspect of an individual and after, and with the number of experience that you see in the resume and the number of things that you are seeing that person have done over the, uh, you know, that particular tenure, you really need to have some kind of real proof to believe that, okay, this is kind of something that the person has really done. Maybe the person has really done, but it has to be really projected in, in a very good way, in a very good fashion with a proper authentic examples. I think Alex was talking about the repositories. Alex was talking about some proof of work. You were also talking about. So when people are trying to bring multiple things together, a person who is a web developer can be a great, great content creator, maybe a big community builder, very much possible. People are there as an example, living with us. But that, those things need to be really projected out well. And those things will be should be really talk very well in the interview process itself. Because otherwise, just putting few liners on the on the resume, it might look like it's a bit overwhelming, you know, you know, for anybody to kind of grasp and see like what to do with this particular candidate. I agree. Well, uh, uh, th thanks for sharing. But but like if if you are skilled in multiple, like you, you are eligible for multiple roles, like does it make sense to like tailor your resume towards the opening? Yes. So the thing is like it, it you can. I mean, see the thing is like if you deserve multiple roles where and these roles are like very much uh, distinguished from each other, it doesn't make sense to kind of fitting everything into one resume and serve that for you know in you know different kind of roles. Rather, rather you tailor it in a way that how what what exactly match with the job description. The example that I've given that if I'm applying for a full time role as a content creator, I would focus more on projecting that part into my resume. Of course, I'll put that I have a background of web development, I have a background of full stack development, but I will put forward uh, my content development work over the, over the years so that that kind of gain more you know, uh, traction when somebody is looking into my resume. At the same time, if I'm going for an architect, say, you know, uh, who is also looking at a full stack uh, developer come architect, I'll be focusing more on what kind of projects I have done in the, full, in, in the full stack development, and I'll be projecting those repositories, I'll be talking about those projects, and of course, I'll be add, adding it 
to that like you know what kind of content i have created how i have helped the community with my content i'll be adding that so it's all about how you represent in your resume your strength your skills based on what kind of job description that you actually going for based on what kind of job you are going for i th- i think if i can just build on this kunal it it's kind of what alex said earlier right which is a lot of times a resume is a condensed version of who you are and your story and so the reason you tailor it is you only have so much space or so many words to really convey or stand out amongst the crowd and so if you can select the best parts of yourself and optimize that for a specific role type let's say you're applying for a web developer role right you probably want to highlight other web development roles or if you were applying for a mobile job then you probably want to highlight that mobile jobs or if you're applying for a back end role or a blockchain role or even if it was projects you would want to highlight certain projects that are more tailored or related to the given job and so that when a recruiter or the developer who's looking at your resume is going through it they see something and immediately it stands out to them right i think that that's what tapas is trying to get at Uh, Tapas, do you have anything to add or no? I think so. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Rong and 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 Tapas. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, some some great points. And shout out to Alex as well, who has been like uh, I believe we got disconnected, but uh, some great points mentioned over there. Let's talk a little bit more about you know reaching out to people. So let's we talk about we talk about building in public and you know like this whole having an online presence thing. and uh, the key focus i want to have over here is for let's say someone who is an introvert you know um cuz this is a question i get quite a lot like i'm an introvert how do i you know be active on social media or represent the work i do and things like that so what uh, suggestions would you have for someone who just wants to get started with building in public wrong you want to take that oh, you want to, you want to go with me yes uh okay sorry the question was how what kind of advice would i give someone who was trying to build in public who yeah, just getting start started building in public yeah. right yeah so i think the the first thing you want to do like we said is to have a page of your own on the web right and a lot of times i've heard that when people build in public they always feel like they're shouting to the abyss right to an empty room and nobody can really hear them i would say that it takes a lot of time for people to notice you or notice your work but you have to keep pushing at it right consistency is really really important i think kunal you you're you're someone who really has shown and inspired a lot of people of being consistent and, sh- and showing up your work tapas as well does that really really consistently favor and insha as well and so that, i think that's the first thing it's a, it's the mindset before you even get anything out there right it's the mindset that you have to be consistent it's the mindset that you have to believe that you're doing this for yourself and that it will pay off in the future. So I think that's the first step. And then the second step is to select the platforms that you want to uh, start hosting yourself. Whether it's a showcase or whether it's Medium or Twitter or whatever form of content you're doing, right? If it is it video, is it text, is it long form text, uh is it uh, audio for for instance, like decide on the platform and then be consistent in doing that. Now, and then in terms of building in public in a world where everything is driven by content where content is king you just have to believe that everything you learn is a form of content and everything you learn is considered building in public you don't have to be building a startup and you can only build you can only publish any everything related to your startup right building in public also means building yourself in public right building your your personal brand in public and so everything you learn everything you understand every problem you solve every note you take every article you read is a form of build in public right and i think elon musk might be the the best example of this where he's literally tweeting everything from 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 scratch and i don't know if you were following him anybody in the crowd here was following him years ago but he didn't have you know 114 million followers right but over time the exponential consistency in his building in public has really led him to where he is today right and and so that that's kind of the first step and the second step and i guess the third step that i would impart to the to the people here 
Thanks for sharing, Rong. We have uh, hands raised by Tapas in favor. Tapas, you can go first. And... Yeah, I'll just quickly add one point. It's like being an introvert myself. Um, so uh, it's not going to stop anyone really from um, building in public and learning in public. So I feel that it's the great way of starting building anything is just share what you learn. I mean, share about any kind of problem solving that you are doing. There could be various mode of sharing. It could be just Twitter, it could be just Twitter thread, or you go to showcase, write thread, write shows, or you write article, or you write videos, whatever. Like, what's your comfort zone? So get into that that particular comfort zone. Start sharing about your problem solving, and you will you will really feel great over the period of time that to to understand that how many how many people are able to connect to that problem solution that you are talking about. How many people are getting benefit out of it? I think whether you are extrovert or you, or you are introvert, the feeling of knowing that you have really helped somebody out there in the community that is immense, and that is going to kind of trigger you back. That is going to motivate you farther to do do better and you might even start after that you know doing something on github and then you're writing about you know how you have built it built a certain project you know and then you're communicating back to back to, back to the world so that's how you build and that's how my journey started and I, i'm really grateful that i have I've done i started in that way because today whenever i think about right right you know building even if it's a small project i think about like what kind of juices i can extract from it like what kind of content that i'll be i'll be creating from it wrong was telling that everything is content that's very true even the code that you are going to put maybe a snippet of it on twitter it's a content even if you are going to write an article it's a content so think about like what kind of thing you can extract out from the problem you are solving from the thing that you are building and just go out don't worry about like who is going to like who is going to comment on it those numbers you know really really doesn't matter to get started with focus on sharing focus on learning that will be my take can, can i just want to add something here so just so everybody understands i mean one of the greatest leverages in our time today in 2022 and 2023 in the next 10 years is content and code right and this is not something that's uh, I conceive of, it's something that Naval Ravikant, I don't know if people know him here, but if you do, he talks a lot about how content and code is two of the most, high, two of the most highest leveraged forms of, of skill in, in, our, in our current age, right? If you can have code, you can build anything. If you know how to code, and I, I'm guessing most of the people in this audience today know how to code or is learning how to code, right? With code, you can build an empire of Twitter, right? With code, you can build because in a software-driven world, code and is creativity and, cre and, and and code is power. On top of that, if you can combine code with content, content in the sense of writing a story, sharing your knowledge, uh, going into the public, and putting your work out there, right? I've seen some people that they make a, a five-minute YouTube video, and then they take that five-minute YouTube video and then they chop it up to fifteen-second videos to impart knowledge again, right? So. These forms of leverage is what wins in the world that we live in today, right? What you can also do is you can take that five-minute video, you can chop it up into 15-second videos, you can put it on TikTok, and you can take that five-minute video, you can chop it up, you can put it on Twitter, and you can take it, you can put it on LinkedIn, you can put it on Showcase, you can put it into another blog, and then reuse that on uh, Spotify. Like, content and code can reach, the same piece of content and the same piece of code can reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in, this, in the world that we live in today because we live in a software-driven world. And that's something that everybody here, I think, should understand. Amazing. Thanks for sharing, Rong and Tabas. And just one quick reminder before we pass it on to Favor and Insha is that uh, whatever things you're learning, you can write a thread on Twitter after this session or you can just live tweet right now as well as we are speaking. Any any points you really love, what you learned, and then we'll reach out to you and give you some nice nice swag. Um, cool, Favor, you can go next, and then Incha. Okay, can you, can you guys hear me? I hope I'm audible. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, great, great, great. All right, so I think Tafas and Rong has made, have made like really great points, but I just wanted to add on to, uh, upon that. So being an introvert myself, you know, I've always found it really difficult to like, you know, at first when I was starting, you know, to like just tweet, you know, just tweet or something because I don't know. I don't know. I just, because I care deeply much what people, you know, would think about it. You know, it's just this introvert thing. And 
one underrated thing that people, you know, just when, when they talk about building in public, learning in public, one underrated thing they don't usually talk about other than just going on LinkedIn or Twitter and, you know, just posting stuff, you know, posting what you're learning, posting what you're building is you can actually, you can actually start, you know, with building in public by just writing blogs. So I found, I sort of, when I started, I, I sort of found like a, a sort of safe haven in, you know, writing blogs because I don't, you know, I'm not limited. I can just sort of, you know, pour out my mind into like whatever blog post I'm writing. So that's definitely how I started and how, you know, I advise people to start. I mean, you can just go and showcase, just create a blog and just start, if, if just, just, just start to document like whatever you're doing. I believe that, you know, whatever, um, what your timeline or, you know, whatever platform you are using, you know, for your blogging platform can actually be like your portfolio. Because, I mean, you can look at a lot of, um, a lot of like great people out there, just go through their timelines. You, you see what they're building. They're, they're just posting everything, whatever they are learning. They're talking about it. You know, someone can see that and sort of like, just know like how experienced this person is. So that was one thing I believed. And for me, when I started out with Twitter, it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really feel it going that well for me. So I just decided to rather start writing blogs. So when it comes to building in public, you can actually, you can totally start with, you know, blogging. So you can write blogs on whatever topic it is you want to write, web development, you know, backend programming. I mean, whatever it is you want to like Web3, you know. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to add that. Thanks for sharing, Faber. And inshallah, I believe you can uh, write now. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Uh, finally. Uh, so, so basically to sum it up, uh, already wrong tapas and favor and made a very great point. I would just say like as an introvert, I also started my journey back uh, last year. So I believe that introverts are very good listeners. Like we prefer to listen more than talk. And so that is one uh, hurdle I would say that uh, people hesitate a lot in order to start because they are more observer than creator, getting into the creator thing. So what what helps actually is like, uh, once you are on any platform, uh, looking to transition into creating content, be it small pieces of content or a long form blog, uh, podcast or anything, you just need to like take the first step instead of like thinking about most of the time, most people never truly like, understand what you are gonna do so instead they wait to react immediately or voice their opinion on whatever you create so like despite of those things uh, you just need that one push in order to create content and go ahead so just through the people starting out uh, instead of thinking about what people are gonna say or voice their opinions on your content you just don't need to make your content the perfect one at a very first go just to start with the basics and this is the spirit of community right like if you are being in a part of a community people are always there to help you out point out what should be improved and what didn't like this this principle we follow very dearly at showcase like if anyone is like the very beginner phase creating content on our platform uh, we review it be it blogs, be it any form of content, we give them uh, reviews about how they can improve and go ahead with that. So try to take in the uh, people's opinion in a very positive way rather than to just like take it in a negative sort and stop whatever you are doing, doing that time. Yep. I agree with that. And also, you know, being a beginner is one of the best skills you can have you know you can share it from your own perspective on social media and it's it's it can definitely help uh, quite quite a lot of folks all right uh, well uh, we can now take some questions we have quite a lot of questions and uh, there we go so saurabh is asking uh, I have a question if a job is required uh, is for front end development only and i have knowledge about about both front end and back end and need I mention both the things or only focus on front end? 
i can talk about that um so if you have if you have knowledge about both front end and back end um you can mention both you should mention both because you must have kind of created project um, based on both so when you are mentioning those projects it is like implicit that those those technologies those related technologies will be uh, called out in your resume somewhere so there is no harm um, but if that if the job description is purely uh, front end oriented i would suggest that you kind of uh put put those projects you know up front and and you know more explanative way like what kind of role you have played on on those front end projects and what exactly uh you have done on those projects that will be really good thing to do but if i am a i am a hiring manager and you have a full stack skill i'll be more happy than being sad because today i might deploy you for the front end role because you have the front end knowledge and tomorrow in my team there is a back end work coming up i know that this is one resource i can bank on maybe i need to give some training or something that you know that person will be able to pick up so no hiring manager will be pissed off because you are you know you are you are having more than less so please mention amazing well thank you a lot thanks a lot for sharing tapas we have quite a lot of questions so thanks a lot for sharing everyone uh, the next one is by venkatesh as they saying that i'm a qa engineer by profession with 6 years of experience how and where do i start to build up develop a portfolio yeah so this is someone who is not just starting out in tech they have like 6 years of experience yeah well the short answer is uh, showcase if i'm allowed to say that for uh, sorry kuna <laughs> i i definitely agree because you know all the things we mentioned like when alex was talking about github repositories github gists and you were talking about content and someone was saying blogs then someone was saying like youtube videos and someone was saying you know all these other things and in, in showcase you know when you create your resume your profile there's a way for you to add all of these things in in a single like on a single page and that's something i believe which is pretty cool so you all can definitely try it out and uh, but yeah. but also generally i think you know it's okay to use as many platforms as you think will help you so yeah. whether it's github or whether it's linkedin I mean you as to maximize your opportunity as an individual online you want to kind of spread your surface as wide as you can right so you want to be available in as many places as there are people because in a world like people could find you on showcase they could find you on linkedin on twitter on on medium it doesn't really matter as long as you put yourself out there and you don't have to have the skills nowadays to build your own portfolio right you just use a service it gives you a beautiful way to showcase who you are and that's it and and all of the platforms i've mentioned above they all do that yeah i i definitely agree and there's one follow up question on the same thing it's like uh, you know wow oh, there's so many questions uh, <laughs> let me just filter uh, snehil is asking do recruiters prefer github as your portfolio as in like your resume as there are many posts on twitter that github is your new portfolio Can I add? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, if we are only talking about like uh, I have a job, I am seeing a job description, and I, you know, someone asked my resume, I just send my GitHub link, like GitHub dot com slash etapos. Would it suffice uh, as a hiring manager to look into? I would say may not completely, but it will give a good perspective of what kind of projects that you are working on. And today, GitHub profile you can add all about yourself. You can add the links to your um, maybe the content that you are creating. Many things you can do. But still, what what we 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 actually miss out over there is like you know when a hiring manager is getting a resume, they expect the resume in you know, most of the cases that they expect the resume in certain format in certain kind of presentation. right so for that particular presentation to carry forward and someone to kind of look into and process that one i think it is good to have uh something as a superset of what you are having in the github right so github profile could be a good mention into that resume itself so for example if you have some some something where your github repositories can be pulled out and then on top of that you can actually pull out all the content that you have created uh like your blogs and all you can add your experience summary you can add add like you know how your career span if you're an experienced developer how your career span across the last 5 years 10 years 
that is that those are your credentials those are the things that ex- exactly matters for somebody who is looking into as a hiring manager so um, rong was talking about you know the showcase resume for a, for an example um, if you get a chance to look into that you know it it also has some of these things that i'm you know we are i'm talking about it's good thing to do or if you are building something by yourself make sure that a summary of yourself the objective of what how you want to build your career what what is your aspirations your credentials your experiences then your projects your all side hustles everything should be there so just github i think making that as a full fledged automated and i i told in the beginning right your portfolio should be something which should be refreshed as you refresh your skill right whether you do it manually or happen automatically uh so you should choose a platform or you should have a platform which will build the build your resume or build your portfolio in that particular fashion Git, github link can be a subset of that thanks a lot for sharing the pass we have a few more folks joining in we have uh, nikita nikita would you like to introduce yourself and share your views <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Kunal. Uh, so it's it's funny. This I was asked the same question yesterday, and today we were discussing it with AJ Jawad, and we came to with this idea that your resume should speak which the most important projects you did in open source. It's fine. I, I mean, it's, as it should be, if you contributed to Open GDK Microsoft, tell it. But secondly, which is probably even more important, when people open your GitHub profile. your your page should be telling it should be customized so it tells what you what you actually do I, I, that's my fault here i i have forked like 200 projects uh, for a reason i need that it's part of what i am but uh, i want people to see specific projects of this ones so i really need to customize my page so it will shout like for the recruiters or for my friends uh, what is it i'm actually doing so it's easier for them to understand so basically that's it that's my, that, it's not my idea it's mostly based on edges idea that's it thanks for sharing nikita and uh, always you know appreciate the great work you do in the open source community so everyone go check out uh, nikita's profile and the work uh, nikita does Cool. cool. Uh, there's another question by Roktim. Can our content be in variety fields, or it should be specific to some? I'm exploring many things right now, so this came in my mind. I'll, I'll just quickly take that. I mean, like I said earlier, right, content is king, and everything is content. So you should share content that shares who you are as a person. Uh, obviously, there is a fine line of, you know, don't overshare some things that are. not safe for work yeah, some people would say you know don't overshare these things but generally if if it's anything intellectual anything that showcases who you are as a person tells your story no problem sharing that and thanks for sharing wrong and uh, there's another good question is there a way through which we can check the quality of our resume that's a good one what well, that's a very subjective question uh Nikita, you raise your hand. Maybe you want to take that. Yeah. What was the question? Sorry, I missed the question. I was going to answer the previous one. So, what was this question? Can oh, go ahead. Why don't you answer the previous one first? Oh, uh, the previous one uh, regarding the story. I, I really like this. It. Uh, sorry for my R. Uh, I, I really like it because, uh, especially juniors, they think that, and even seniors, they think that. Oh, I need to spend eight more years to uh, to share. and like uh, this very morning the person was asking uh, about this uh, you know site projects when you copy something from youtube uh, and like should should i show them to recruiters and my answer was like it depends so like i'm i i don't care about your project as much i'm care about the value it created so if you created this project for yourself to test it tech it's one thing but if you did like kunal does If you created a video about this thing and you explained what was hard for you, what was wrong, what what went well, so other people can benefit and they can learn easier. And probably, uh, maybe you translate it to another language. I don't know. Then it's a huge value. Then you can tell that oh, I helped thousand people by doing this project. Then it's not a side project anymore. That's a very useful project now. So that was what I wanted to add. And, and, and 
No, sorry. I think Kunal, the the second question of that, that was really good, Nikita. Thanks for that, and nice to meet you, by the way. <laughs> I think the second question, Kunal, was about uh, how do you determine a good resume or a bad resume? Is that correct? And and that's so relative. I think uh, the relative version of how good a resume is. Uh, the, sorry, the relative relative take on how good a resume is is that at the end of the day, as long as a resume can really showcase who you are in a condensed an optimized way, that's a good resume, right? So, and, and everybody is different. Everybody who takes that resume for the first time, is, it's going to be different. But the objective way to measure how good your resume is, is you can put that resume through what's called an applicant tracking system, which is what people use to apply to jobs. Now, it's probably the worst way to apply to a job because you will probably be applying alongside thousands, if not you know, ten, tens of thousands of people to a single job. But the objective way of measuring that is that the ATS can scan your resume really well, can take out the skills, can take out the experience, can take out the credentials and projects, and then put that into a database, right? So that's the objective way. But I think the relative way is more important, which is once I actually have your resume in hand and I read it, how quickly and how strict to the point is it that I can understand about who you are, what you've done, and what's your story? That's a great point about ATS. Thanks for sharing, Rong. There's one more question around resume. It says, uh, how is the resume 2.0 different from a normal resume? So the resume 2.0 is, it's supposed to mimic and exactly the same, like a resume, right? The reason why we built the resume 2.0 is for the longest time, people were asking me, like, what format should my resume be in, right? How do I optimize it for the ATS? How should I organize my skills, right? And what the resume 2.0 does is it just takes a snapshot of your entire portfolio, the dynamic portfolio as we've talked about over and over again. You don't have to, you know, go to Word doc, try to reformat that, edit it, change it. You don't have to do any of that. The resume 2.0 is just a dynamic version where you just click view resume and it just builds a resume for you in the most optimized format. And that's already ATS optimized for you. And it just lays out everything about you. So, so that's what the resume 2.0 is, right? The, the dark mode and the light mode, that's up to you. You can generate it in light mode. You can generate it in dark mode. So that's up to you. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing, Rong. And I believe we are, we are you know, almost at time as well. So respecting your time. But yeah, favor, uh, uh, you can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, some, uh, some extra points on what Rong said. So another thing that uh, makes a uh, resume 2.0, you know, sort of make you stand out is that unlike a traditional resume where you only have like your uh, work experience, educational experience, your, your bio, right? So the resume 2.0 that is generated by Showcase actually lets you put in your tech stacks, right? So I think earlier I was talking, I was telling everyone about the story when I was part of like a hiring team. So a lot of them, we, did, we couldn't even find like what tech stacks they were looking for. And, you know, whilst, whilst filtering, we're just looking for a specific thing. But like there is my 2.0, like it's just there highlighted. Everybody can see your tech stack. The recruiter can see crystal clear what you know, you're all about. So it lets you also link in your circles, right? So that the circles are like people who you've worked with, right? So think about it as like sort of like references. So if a recruiter can actually, you know, reach out to one of them. And because the resume 2.0 actually comes in like a PDF format, it's, there are links embedded in them. So people can actually, so recruiters can actually click on those links and it just takes them to the profile of whosoever you have, like, you know, put in as a, as a, as, as a reference or as part of your circle. You know, you can also bring in your GitHub repositories, you know, so, um, you know, recruiters can see the kind of projects you've worked on. And yeah, so that's just um, some of like, you know, what makes a resume 2.0, you know, different from your regular resume thing. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing, Favor. And thanks everyone else for sharing as well. A little about time, but uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, suggestions and questions and thoughts in the uh, pinned tweet. So you all can check it out and, you know, discuss it amongst uh, yourself and, uh, you know, just answer questions in public so that, um, you, you'll be helping so many other people. But yeah, uh, just one last thing is if you learn something from this session, just write a thread around it and uh, tag showcase and uh, community classroom and we'll reach out to you and we'll give you some nice swag, some lucky winners. 
And uh, yeah, this was a very fun session. And if you missed it, don't worry, we'll be uh, posting it on our YouTube channel later on. But yeah, just one more thing I want to share is that uh, there's the uh, Dev Elevate uh, you know event going on by Showcase. You can check out the pin tweet, learn more about it. I won't share much, you know. But you can just check out the blog that is on this pin tweet, and uh, you can just take part in it. Um, yeah, any closing remarks? Wrong, the pass, flavor, Nikita. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can just tell one quick thing about the resume and interview before we close. It's like, see, the in, in an interview, um, the more time you spend talking, you have higher chance of getting that job than your interviewer speaking. So you can only speak more uh, if you have relevant projects um, and you are able to explain that project. So it's immensely important that you put those pointers in your resume. Based on that, you'll be getting into that room or getting into the call for interview. And try to explain your project in authentic way, like what your contributions, how you build, what is the vision, and you have higher chance probably getting the job otherwise. So yeah, that will be my take, and all the best people. Yeah, let's to everybody. You know, good luck. Keep building. You know, we're all here with you. The community is here. Don't feel alone. Join a community. Get connected. And thanks, Kunal, for inspiring everybody all the time. No, thank you. And thanks everyone, you know, you for giving your your time and joining us. Uh, Nikita, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add. It's not only to resume, it's actually to how you live life. I think so. We need to think of others. So if if I'm giving somebody a resume, I will think of this person reading it. So I will try to make it one page, and I will try to make it uh, usable. So. If I'm applying for backend developer, then probably I shouldn't try that I can use Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. Probably probably open source projects, which I will mention there, they will be about backend. Stuff like that. Just think of this person. Uh, they, they, As it was mentioned, they might receive like few hundreds at least resumes. And make yours the most enjoyable one. Make it look nice. Make it read nice. Make sure that people who cannot see colors, they can read it. And make it not to overload it. Make it to the point. And so so the person will be like, oh, finally, nice resume. And that's it. So, and that's that goes to the code, that, that goes to the life. And uh, yeah, just help them even via your resume. Just help this poor HR. <laughs> that's it. I agree with the you know, life part. Definitely very, very important. Amazing. Uh, well, thanks for joining everyone. And just one last reminder, check out the pin tweet, join the Dev Elevate event. Uh, you can you know, showcase your work. It's completely free to join and to check out Showcase as well. Uh, give them a follow on Twitter and uh, get involved in the community. And you can meet some amazing, amazing developers. Uh, people keep asking me how to find remote jobs and stuff. So Showcase also has a portal where you can find remote jobs. So you can check that out. And uh, yeah, it's really fun talking to everyone. And we'll see you in the in the next one. Have a great day. I'm looking forward to seeing your threads and giving me awesome stuff as well. And yeah, have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. See you, friends. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Everyone. Bye. bye.